Marco Polo, you may think of the classical children's swimming pool game. However, this is a common misconception. Marco Polo is actually a remarkable traveler from Venice, Italy in the 13th century. Marco was born September 15, 1254. In 1260, Marco's father and uncle set sail to Crimea from Constantinople on a trading journey. Niccolo, let's set sail to Crimea from Constantinople for a trading journey. Yes, let's. Two years later, Niccolo and Mafio receive an invitation to meet Kublai Khan in Cathay. <laughs> Mafio, it's an invitation from Cathay to meet Kublai, the Khan of all the Mongols. Let's go! Marco accompanied his father and his uncle on a trip from Venice, Italy, all the way down to the Holy Land. Yay, Holy, Holy Land. Land! Next, they went from Holy Land to Persia. Persia. Next, they went from Persia all the way to Cathay, which is now known as China. After three years, we finally reached Cathay! Yay. I am Kublai Khan, and welcome to my country. Marco Polo, you are now my envoy. Now go through China on my missions. For traveling through Asia as one of my missionaries, I now appoint you as governor of one of my cities. Congratulations on your marriage. Thank you, Marco. Me too. Thank you. That was a good wedding, guys, yeah, wasn't it? Was it was great. That was good. Let's head back home to Venice. Let's go. Black All right. Sea. Black Sea. Black Sea. In 1295, Marco Polo arrives in Venice with the finest collection of jewels ever seen. At the time that Venice was at war with Genoa, Marco Polo was made commander of a Venetian galley. While in prison, I told the story of my travels to Rusticello of Pisa, a writer, and he wrote The Million, a first-hand account of my travels. Marco Polo, you are now released from the prison of Genoa. Away, you go. I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may now hug the bride. This is Bellella. This is Moretta. Mommy, mommy. Quiet, Fantina. Oh. things you need to know about Marco Polo. Marco Polo was revolutionary when it came to the contact between China and Europe in pre-Renaissance times. Marco brought back many ideas from China, such as the idea of larger, more crowded cities and Chinese customs. However, the point of view of Marco's story, his own, was obviously based towards a European standpoint, and some of his stories may even be lies. However, he still brought back Chinese ideas, religious beliefs, traditions, and their language. Nothing interrupted Marco's contact with China. He simply wanted to go home after spending a long time there, much to the Khan's dismay. China obviously had a very different structured society than Europe. They had more crowded, poor cities and harsh leaders. Marco also tried to spread Christianity there, but he failed. All in all, Marco Polo's effects on that culture were astonishing and great and fabulous.